Welcome to 21 Portland Place, headquarters of the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland. My name is Dr David Bogod, Vice President of the Association, and I have with me today two consultant anaesthetists, Dr Tim Meek from Middlesbrough and Dr John Pickard from London. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, hello. Um, we're here to talk about a local anaesthetic toxicity, so Tim, perhaps you could explain a little bit about that. Thank you, David. Um, well, in this context, we're talking about um, unwanted and adverse effects of local anaesthetic drugs. Uh, local anaesthetic drugs are given very commonly in a lot of anaesthetic manoeuvres. Many people have had them with the dentist as, a, as an example. Um, and as anaesthetists, we often use them in, in other more complex, uh, more complex ways. Given in the correct place, in the correct dose, local anaesthetic drugs are very safe and will fulfil their major role of alleviating pain. But by extension, if you give an incorrect dose or give the drug into an incorrect place, you can get toxic effects. And what we're talking about in this context really is the accidental delivery of, uh, of an overdose of local anaesthetic drugs into the bloodstream. Thank you. And am I right in saying local anaesthetic drugs, these are the drugs that produce numbness in the area they're injected rather than drugs that are used to send you to sleep? That's correct. And as I say, most people's experience of this will be of, an, of a visit to the dentist where they have an injection into the gum to numb a tooth before a filling or some other such treatment. John, we hear quite a lot about drug allergies now, and I know they've been in the news a lot. Is this some form of allergy we're talking about here? By and large, the answer is no. What happens when people have uh, a reaction to local anaesthetic of this kind is that they get too much local anaesthetic into their blood. And that can happen either because the injection goes into their bloodstream when it shouldn't, or because the injection has gone into the right place, but they absorb too much into their bloodstream. Either way, no allergy is involved. It can happen to anyone whether or not they think they are allergic to local anaesthetic. That said, there are some people who seem to be particularly susceptible to uh, getting too much local anaesthetic. Uh, those people would have one or two of very, very rare conditions. So, uh, Tim, how common is this sort of local anaesthetic toxicity that we're talking about today? Well, I think the correct answer is that we don't really know. Uh, we do know it's very uncommon, and in particular the, the very serious, either life-threatening or fatal episodes of local anaesthetic toxicity are extremely, extremely rare. And, and therein lies a problem. It's very hard to, uh, to measure and, and sample very rare events to give meaningful figures. Uh, various figures are, are quoted in the literature, um, perhaps as common as one in a thousand for minor toxic effects, so ones which are, are not life-threatening and not fatal, but uh, really we, we don't know exactly how common this is. Uh, just to follow up, it, it might come as a bit of a surprise to people to learn that local anaesthetics can cause life-threatening effects. Have patients actually lost lives as a result of this? Uh, they have, uh, as I say, extremely, extremely uncommon, um, but th there have been uh, notable cases that have been reported in the press uh, within the last uh, four years or so, um, the case of a woman who was inadvertently given an incorrect drug uh, that was intended to be given as an epidural during labour uh, anaesthesia, where the drug would be delivered into the epidural space in the back, a very safe manoeuvre that thousands of women have week in, week out. Um, Unfortunately, accidentally, it was connected to her intravenous drip and given intravenously as a, a very large dose. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, she didn't survive that. So, John, why is the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland seen fit now to produce this safety guideline? The Association has produced this second version of the guidelines because there's great good news afoot. You see, anaesthesia is like, dare I say it, shark-infested custard. It'll sound trite, but it's true. You see, generally, anaesthesia is smooth and sweet and uneventful and great for the patients. But lurking within it, unseen, are some terrible dangers. Some dangers such as an anaphylactic reaction, an idiosyncratic reaction to the anaesthetic, perhaps the failure of the anaesthetist to be able to give oxygen when necessary. A similar terrible danger until very recently has been what we're discussing now, getting too much local anaesthetic in an overwhelming fashion. That was one of the great 
feared sharks. And now, and now it seems that we have a, what may be a very effective antidote. In short, the good news is one of the sharks has apparently been tamed. So the news is really that, that a lipid solution, a solution of fat, can be used to treat this potentially fatal reaction to a local anaesthetic. It doesn't seem particularly intuitive. Tim, how did this come about and how long have we known about it? Well, the initial observation was made by a very wily and acute uh, anaesthetist working in, in the United States, Professor Guy Weinberg, who observed in some animal studies that lipid emulsion uh, could actually uh, prevent or indeed save them from cardiac arrest due to local anaesthetic toxicity. And he published his results over a series of, a series of years in, uh, in scientific journals. Uh, and that's where we picked up on the, um, uh, on the information and through a process of working with the Association of Anaesthetist, were able to work together with others uh, and developing the guidelines which were ultimately produced in 2007, the more recent iteration of which uh, has just been launched. Uh, and has this actually saved patients' lives? Indeed so. There are now several case reports in peer-reviewed journals of patients' lives being saved by lipid, ther lipid emulsion therapy uh, from local anaesthetic toxicity, both in the situation of cardiac arrest and near cardiac arrest, uh, and perhaps more excitingly more, and more interestingly now from uh, overdose of other drugs rather than local anaesthetic drugs. So it seems that the, the remit of, of lipid emulsion therapy may well in the future lie outside the scope of anaesthesia. Uh, John, are these lipid emulsions safe to give patients? They seem safe. We don't have yet a huge experience of giving uh, lipid emulsion to patients who are severely intoxicated. The very intoxication is rare. So we haven't got the experience of, say, uh, the use of aspirin. But that said, it seems safe, and it's certainly a lot safer than not getting the lipid. Uh, Tim, is this something that's only of interest to anaesthetists, or do other practitioners need to know about it as well? Undoubtedly, it is something which, which should be of interest to other practitioners, because it's not just anaesthetists that give local anaesthetic drugs. Uh, there are many surgical specialties where surgeons will give uh, infiltration of local anaesthetic drugs in... Um, uh, isolated or semi-isolated uh, situations where there may not be an anaesthetist immediately to hand. Uh, and those patients particularly, uh, potentially might be at a risk of toxicity as well. So it would seem uh, more than sensible that, uh, that surgeons and other practitioners operating in that type of environment should know about this as well and should have lipid emulsion readily to hand. So this is a, a good news medical story. Uh, until recently, local anaesthetics could or had the potential to cause uh, reactions, including fatal reactions amongst patients. And now, somewhat unexpectedly, we have a specific treatment and antidote for it. Perhaps even more unexpectedly, that antidote turns out to be a simple lipid or fat emulsion given intravenously. The guidelines produced by the Association of Anaesthetists of Great Britain and Ireland are the first in the world on this subject. And this is an example where Britain has led the rest of the world in patient safety. They have now been adopted nationally by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence and indeed internationally by the Australian and New Zealand College of Anaesthetists. Thank you very much gentlemen for appearing here today.